Good time everyone. My name is Dr. Harem Jafar Hamarashid. I have MSc in periodontics. I'll talk about uh, a series of lecture regarding the key sheet presentation plus periodontal instruments and basics of instrumentation. This lecture are dedicated to stage four students at the College of Dentistry, University of Soleimani for the year of uh, 2017 to 2018. So let us start our topics. We just modified your case sheet for the class 4 periodontic department for the year 2017 to 2018. And the case sheet, uh, the, the form of case sheet is just like this. You start in the name, age and sex, telephone number, occupation and code number of each patient. It's preferable to just label the code number of each patient to recognize them. And uh, this case sheet may be at the future be useful for research. You ask about the visits to dentist. Is it regular visit or irregular? The regular visit is each three to six months. And or for example, maybe the patient visit the dentist each year on a regular basis and irregular is uh, when the patient just visiting the dentist during pain or during a complaint so you should label it here regular and irregular one you should ask the chief complaint the purpose of visits Is it check up? Is it check up when the patient have nothing or just are adapted? <coughs> sorry, to come each three to six months for for check up or annually for check up, or the patient have a complaint. That's why he visits a dentist. And these main complaints are such as bleeding, pain halitosis or bad odor, sensitivity of the teeth, mobility of the teeth, staining, and swelling. It's preferable to write down the patient's own word that he described the complaint and you should treat the complaint that the patient come to, to the clinic for. So when the patient is seeking the treatment of a bleeding, bleeding gum, you should seek the treatment of the bleeding gum. And don't let the patient go home unless treated, and let the chief complaint treat it. And patient may have many complaints at the, complaints at the same time. For example, patient may have a pain as well as halitosis and bleeding. Or patient may seek in the aesthetic. But the aesthetic is not, not a chief complaint. In case of aesthetic, in dentistry, orthodontic treatment is aesthetic. And construction of bridges and crowns are aesthetic. Also, fillings are aesthetic. Changing amalgam filling to composite filling are aesthetic. Putting veneers are aesthetic. So... Aesthetic is a general term, it isn't preferred to, to use it, so it's preferable to write down a specific term and to ask patient about the chief complaint that he come to the clinic for. Next after that is medical history. 
He just asked about the heart disease. The heart disease is related to per periodontal department or to the periodontology. As a patient, if the patient have a heart disease, you should be aware for giving anesthetics containing epinephrine and let's add the under the supervision of the of the patient's physician and the patient may have a heart failure or myocardial infarction or cardiac arrest these three terms are regarded to us as periodontal periodontal department so especially when the patient have myocardial infarction we shouldn't work for the patient till six months after the first attack so when the patient have a myocardial infarction you shouldn't work for the patient till the six month because the recurrence is maybe may happen during the, that six month so if it is necessary you should consult the physician for working for these patients hypertension elevated blood pressure in these cases you should be aware of giving anesthesia and avoid traumatic traumatic work traumatic procedure during periodontal treatment and uh, not letting the patient to get an anxiety and uh, increase the blood pressure by fear or stress so you should be aware about that diabetes mellitus we have many oral manifestations of diabetes mellitus including multiple caries delayed healing and mouth odor expressing like ketoacidosis so in these cases you may see a bone loss a bone loss compared to a normal normal person have no have no diabetes and you have neutrophil dysfunction impaired in the immunity so in these cases you should be aware of not causing trauma during work because this may affect the healing process because uh, there's a delay healing and there's a dysfunction in the neutrophils which are defense which are defending our bodies and they are the main inflammatory process that defending the bacteria, that uh, attacking the bacteria, sorry, and defending our bodies. <coughs> Kidney diseases. For example, patient have kidney transplant. You shouldn't work at the day of transplant because there's a new heparin in the blood all the blood, blood are changed and there is a heparin that's uh, that they put in the blood and uh, it it needs 24 hours for the he for the own heparin to be created and to cause a clotting so at the day of the dialysis at the day of dialysis you shouldn't do any periodontal treatment but for kidney transplant the patient may take cyclosporine cyclosporine and this cyclosporine will decrease the immunity of the patient and may cause gingival swelling this is one of the drugs beside the nifedipine and beside the calcium channel blockers who cause gingival swelling and when you see the case, you may you may decide that this patient have inflammatory process, or inflammatory gingivitis. But uh, in fact, this is because of the cyclosporine, the drugs that uh, that that are prescribed for the kidney transplant. So we should be you should be aware about that. 
Epilepsy, in case of epilepsy, try to remove any sharp instrument around the patient because during the attack he may grasp a har harmful instruments or sharp instruments and uh, he or she may hurt himself or herself and uh, try to work intermittently for the patient and uh, ask the patient to take the anticonvulsant treatment before before starting the procedure uh, and try to uh, to make uh, treatment out of trauma and there's allergy here you should uh, should be aware of uh, what's what the patients have allergy for or any any drugs that the patient have allergy you shouldn't prescribe these drugs or sometimes instruments some some patients have allergy by steel steel instruments so in these cases you should use plastic instruments so you should uh, you should be aware of foods drugs or instruments for the allergic reactions in case of pregnancy the pregnant ladies have a special co concern in the periodontal departments for example their treatments should be short term maximum maximum the treatment should reach an hour it shouldn't reach an hour and the patient shouldn't be in a supine position because it may affect the inferior vena cava of the of the lady and the patient may and may cause the postural hypotension or it may affect the child it may place the diaphragm of the lady may place a pressure on the child and cause suffocation and cause suffocation to the child so in these cases in case of pregnancies the patient should be in an upright position and uh, you should use a minimum amount of time for treatment and try to use uh, not to take take out the treatments in one visit so you should be take care about the giving anesthesia containing epinephrine and cause less traumatic procedure and of course uh, take out the treatment under the supervision or under the consultation of the physician and it's allowed to work for the pregnant ladies in three to six months from one to three from six to nine it's preferable to not do to not do any periodontal treatment but if it is quite necessary you should consult the physician in case of infectious diseases you should protect yourself and the patient uh, and be aware of just uh, putting on masks, double masks, double gloves and the instruments should be completely sterilized and try to use disposable, disposable instruments and all the areas isolated when working for those patients and malignancy is it's, it's just according to the cases which type of malignancies for example in leukemia you have bruises in the gingiva you have swelling you have spontaneous bleeding so in these cases according to the malignant cases and uh, with the cooperation with the physician and in cooperation with the physician you should take out the treatment uh, to get a better result and any other any other diseases should we put it here 
and if you have any notes regarding any of these diseases you should write down here so regarding the medication in case of medication here we have two questions are you currently use any drugs for specific disease this tell us if the patient have any systemic diseases or for example any recent extractions or any endodontic treatments and this give us a clue for the statements of the patient to think about the situation of the patient regarding for example some patient taking warfarin or aspirin and we, we need to do a surgical procedure for the patient in these cases we should stop the warfarin and aspirin under the supervision of the dent of the physician so as not cause uh, a bleeding during uh, or during the surgical procedure or after the surgical procedure because it, it prevents the clotting and you may get a bleeding profuse bleeding after surgical procedure so it should be stopped five days for example this is an example warfarin for example five days before the surgical operation or you may ask about any previously used prophylactics before dental treatments I'll give you an example for example some patient have a prosthetic heart valve and need to take a prophylactic drugs before any treatments so if they have prophylactic treatment before uh, before uh, they come to you and you start your treatment you may think about any m many systemic disease needs prophylaxis before the treatment myocardial infarctions prosthetic heart valves tuberculosis these are needing prophylactics or sometimes patient have a history of dry socket for example for example and come to your clinic and need an extraction you just take a history from him did you have a history of dry socket before if he asked yeah if he answered yes so you should prescribe a prophylactic antibiotics before the extraction to minimize the rate of dry socket in these cases we come to we come to uh, familial history in case of familial history we, we just ask the patient about the hypertension diabetes mellitus and aggressive periodontitis actual hypertension and diabetes mellitus you should ask about uh, the patient's mother and father and grandmother and grandfathers or any member of the family having a specific type of disease and in case of aggressive periodontitis which is genetically related to the family uh, you should take uh, in consultation with your uh, with your teacher in the department there's many investigations to confirm that this this case is aggressive periodontitis and when it's confirmed you have a special management for these cases and special treatment plan in case of past dental history you ask about the history of scaling and polishing filling fixed and removal processes orthodontic appliances extractions and if you have any notes write please write down here and when you ask about the habits you ask about bruxism clenching nail biting thumb sucking and case of smoking which which mainly one of the main effectors on the periodontium so you should ask about the smoking uh, if the patient's current smoker the current smoker is the one who just smoked 100 cigarettes and bef before that 
they smoked hundred cigarettes and nowadays uh, daily they smoke 20 cigarettes but former smoker are those who smoked hundred cigarettes before but now they are not smoking uh, and they are quitting and how many cigarettes per day Nergals, Nergals and uh, or Shisha and which is nowadays more popular and is it daily or weekly or monthly oral hygiene care which is about toothbrushing type of toothbrush is it soft medium or hard is it manual by your hand or electric one the technique of toothbrushing is it vertical horizontal circular or if the patient is someone dentist or scientific person knowing the name of the toothbrushing technique you should write down here frequency duration and time the frequency is how many times in a day how many times one times two times three times and the duration is for how many minutes duration is for how many minutes while the time the third one is it at night or at day we come to the flow scene does the patient flows or not and other oral hygiene aids like mouthwash like to like toothpicks like super flows like steam udent like interdental brush like single tufted brush these are other oral hygiene aids for example water and salt we come to the clinical examination here extra oral examination we have TMJ just look around for pain during opening and closing when you put your fingers in front of the ear and uh, feel the clicking if there's any clicking of the TMJ joint during opening and closing and check out if there's a limitation of opening or the patient have a normal opening facial texture look for the color for the ulcer and for the swelling lymph nodes any tenderness any palpability is it fixed or movable you should write it down here then we come to the intraoral examination the intraoral examination here is very really important for detecting the situation or the condition of the patient we have a plug test here plug test and this is the first molar okay and this is upper central incisor this is right this is right this is left and the upper first premolar okay you should just just if the plug is present you have six sextant for example this is buccal this is lingual one this is mesial buccal this is distal buccal and this is mesial lingual and this is distal lingual and this is the distal mesial and this is a distal So you have six sextants to check in and uh, just write it down if it is present or not. If it is present, just mark the area. <coughs> and if it is not, just leave it empty. And when you test the area with the 
with the periodontal probe. If you find any bleeding after 20 seconds or just after the probe, you, you do the probing, you should wait in the bleeding test, test you should just check the, the surfaces, each surfaces, and after that, there is no bleeding directly, you should wait 20 seconds to see if there is bleeding or not, then you, you write it down there. And uh, finally, you have basic periodontal examination. In the basic periodontal examination, you have six sextants. This is the upper right from the first premolar to the end, and this is the upper left from the first premolar to the end, and this is from K9 to K9 upper, and this is from K9 to K9 lower, and this is from the lower first premolar to the end, right side, and this is from the first premolar to the end, right side. When you just examine the basic periodontal examination, you just examine the whole teeth. Here in the bleeding test and the plug test, you just examine six teeth. But here you examine all of the teeth. And you have many scores. For example, score zero, when you have a score zero, there is nothing, there is no bleeding on probing, there is no calculus, there is no pocket, but when you have a score one, you have a bleeding on probing, and the treatment of zero and the treatment of one it's just motivation and oral hygiene instruction. When, well, when we, we come to the score 2, when there is a score 2, in case of score 2, we have a calculus and we have retentive factors. When you have a calculus, the treatment is removing of the calculus, scaling, after that, polishing. But when you have a retentive factor, it's preferable to just treat the retentive factors. When the patient have no other problems, just the retentive factor. And the retentive, plug retentive factors are, for example, the calculus itself are holding the plugs. Ill-fitted dentures are holding the plugs or the ill-fitted prosthesis, ill-fitted crowns not adapted to the tooth surface, orthodontic appliances, partially impacted tooth or badly carious tooth. These are, all of them are retentive factor and they are considered as a, as a score two. So you should be aware about that. In case of uh, score 3, you have a pocket. You know that the normal sulcus is from 0.5 to 3.5. From 3.5 to 5.5, the, this is named a pocket. A pocket is a, pa a pathological deepening of the sulcus. So in this case, you should be aware about the uh, presence of the pocket and uh, the treatment is motivation and oral hygiene instruction and the uh, scaling and polishing and because of there is a pocket but not such a deep pocket, you may, uh, you may take a uh, Rooted planing as a treatment procedure, as a treatment plan, you may take it as a consideration in the treatment plan. Or sometimes a patient may need, sometimes may need a surgical intervention when you have, for example, 5.5 pockets. In score 4, you have more than 6 millimeter pockets. 
understand motivation and instruction, scaling and polishing, routine planning, and surgical interventions. The basic points in the basic periodontal examination, BPE, is that you should score the highest score. For example, when you just examine from canine to canine, and you have, for example, bleeding on probing on one tooth, and calculus on the other tooth, and for example, a pocket on the another one tooth, you should just write down the maximum score. For example, you have a three, you have four, four millimeter pocket, and you have calculus, and you have a bleeding on probing, you just score because you have four millimeters pocket and the pocket is between 3.5 to 5.5 so this is score 3 and the score 3 I told you about the treatment so this is the main point that you should just score the highest score okay and if you have if you have any uh, uh, furcation involvement in the molars you should just write down the asterisk like that like that you should write down the asterisk in case of furcation involvement like that so this is the basic periodontal examination and uh, you end up with the students signature and supervi supervisor signature and the date and remember that this is an informed consent and you should sign and the supervisor sign then the case sheet is counted for you and this is regarding the case sheet I hope you just learned a little about it and uh, just got benefit from it let us talk about the instruments on, in the fourth stage you start to deal with the instruments that you are using it in your daily life clinics throughout your career you should use it and uh, we start to introduce basic periodontal instruments for you according to the uses and according to the stage or levels of your education and the needs that you are needed in that stage when we ask about the when we talk about the classification of periodontal instruments <coughs> we have main five periodontal instruments and according to the purpose that they serve are classified to the periodontal probes Explorer, scaling, root planning, and cure touch instruments like skill scaler, curate, hoe, chisel, and file scalers, ultrasonic, and sonic instruments. The fourth one, periodontal endoscope. The fifth one, cleansing and polishing instruments like rubber caps, brushes, and dental tapes. This is the main part of a typical periodontal instrument. For example, you have a handle here, separated and serrated, and you can just specify or just identif identify the handle of the instrument. And this is the shank, the area that connects the handle to the blade. And the third one is the blade is the cutting edge or the edge of stroke that you you make an active uh, work with it this is the blade one of the most popular instrument in the fourth stage that you are using it on daily basis in the periodontal department is the skill scaler sickle scaler the basic characteristic of this instrument when you take uh, a cross section from that instrument you just see that there's a flat 
surface. There's a flat surface. The face is a flat. There's a triangular shape. It's triangular having two cutting edge, double cutting edge, this edge and this edge. And there's a sharply pointed tips, just like an explorer. So this is a cutting, this is a sharp cutting pointed tips. The uses, the main uses, are to remove supragingival calculus, supragingival calculus, and are used with pull stroke. And just pull the instrument when you are working with. And the cutting edge is the junction of face and lateral surface. These are the cutting edges. Here and here. <coughs> the shank design, you, you find a two design in the clinic. The straight one, the first one, that one. It's just modified to the interiors and premolars because the heads are smaller and it's well adapted to the interior one better than the posterior. You can work with it in the posterior but this is better adapted to the interior. The contra angled is for the posterior. Okay. The contra angled are for the posterior this one this is for the anterior this is for the posterior why because the angles the contra angles are used just uh, to adapt the different angles of the crown of the of the molars and we have many ties listed here we have a curate this is an instrument of choice for removing deep sub subgingival calculus. Deep subgingival calculus. For root planing, especially in score 3 basic periodontal examination, as we mentioned in, mentioned in the case sheet. For root planing, altered cementum and removing the soft tissue lining of the periodontal pocket. The characteristics of the blade when you take a cross section. There's a spoon-shaped blade and there's a rounded tip, not a pointed tip like a scalar. And appears semicircular with the convex base in a cross section. The curved blade and rounded toy of the curate allow the blade to adapt better to the root surface. Unlike the straight design and pointed end of the skull scalar, which can cause tissue laceration and trauma. So the best instrument subgingivally on the root surface is the curate. We have two main types of curate universal, which are used on the all of the teeth, and the area specific or gracie curate, which are specified to a specific area. Each instrument are specified to a specific. We have a hose scaler. This is for scaling of ledges and rings of calculus. The cutting edge formed by the action of the flattened surface with the inner aspect of the blade. And they are beveled at 45 degrees and angulation of 99 degrees. An instrument is activated with a firm pull stroke. You just pull the instrument in the hose scaler. Hoiskela. And the blade is this is the way of action. You just pull it uh, coronally. You just put the the active edge of the of the instrument under the calculus and you just pull it up the blade slightly bowed so that it can maintain contact at two points on a convex surface one of them is on the tooth surface and one of them is on the root surface for example subgingivally the back of a blade is rounded and it will not cause a trauma 
and the blade has been reduced to minimal thickness. Files. Files has series of blades on, ba on a base used to fracture or crush tenacious calculus, sometimes used for removing overhang in of the fillings and can easily gauge and roughen root surface if used improperly. Can easily gauge and uh, roughen the root surface if used improperly. And we have a chisel scaler, double-ended with a curved shank at one end and a straight shank at the other end designed for proximal surface of the teeth too closely spaced usually used for the anterior teeth and blades are slightly curved and straight cutting edge bevel at 45 this is a file and this is a chisel And the chisel is activated by pushing motion. You push, just push the instrument while the side of the blade is held firmly against the root surface. Principles of periodontal instrumentation. There are many important principles for instrumentation. During instrumentation, you should follow these rules. Fundamental prerequisites for effective instrumentation are First of all, is proper position of the patient and the operator. You should, you should take your position properly according to your patient. And this is named accessibility. And you should, ha you should have an, a good illumination and retraction for, retraction for optimal visibility. And this is named visibility, accessibility, visibility. Condition and sharpness of the instrument. Your instrument should be very active, not dull to obtain a maximum result. And clean field, clean dry field, and you should have an instrument stabilization and lastly instrument activation. We are going to each one of them Accessibility is the position of the patient and operator. It facilitates the thoroughness of instrumentation. Patient and operator position should provide the maximum accessibility to the area of operation. The positioning of the operator of you should be seated on a comfortable operating stool and the feet of the clinician should be flat on the floor and the thigh of the clinician should be parallel to the flow and the clinician back should be straight and head erect mouth, mouth of the patient should be close to the resting elbow of the patient like that your feet in, on the flow your thigh are parallel to the flow and your elbow are just close to the, to the area of working and you have a good visibility directly by the light to the mouth of the patient and you adjust the light according to the position of the patient and you have uh, just a flat back and erect head Visibility, illumination, and retraction. The visibility can be done by the mirror and mirror and your finger and you have direct direct visibility or indirect visibility, direct illumination by the light or indirect illumination by the light when you put the light directly to the mouth and work at that area this is direct illumination and when you use a mirror to reflect the light and see the areas this is indirect illumination retraction 
use of mirror to deflect the cheek use of the finger of the non-operating hand that finger which is not operating to retract the cheek it's preferable to be index finger use of the mirror to retract the, to retract the tongue and the combination of the above methods <coughs> condition and sharpness of the instruments Instruments should be clean, sterile, with sharp working ends to be effective. Sharp instruments enhance tactile sensitivity and allow the clinician to work more precisely. <coughs> Dull instrument means incomplete removal of calculus and unnecessary trauma. In maintaining a clean field, Instrumentation can be hampered if the operative field is obscured by the saliva, blood and debris. So you should, you should clean the area with a cotton or with the air syringe to have a good visibility to the area that you are working on. Sometimes a piece of food will, uh, will show you that there is a calculus, for example or a piece of black food between your teeth show you that this may be a stain or a piece of calculus but when you just clean it with the air with the syringe air you find that this is a piece of debris so clean the operating field clean the operating field can be obtained with a saliva ejector or an aspirator and by weeping or bloating with the gauze or with the cottons In stabilization of instrument, the stability of instrument and hand is the primary request for control instrumentation. It's very, very important to stabilize your instrument. It's very important to have a finger rest, to have a good grasping of the instrument. The requirements are, the requirement of stabilization are for effective instrumentation, and avoidance of injury to the patients or the clinician because if you don't have uh, a good support a good stabilization a good finger rest you may end up with the injury because the you 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 just apply a force when you are removing the calculus if it is not stabilized that force the 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 instrument may slip from your hand and causing trauma to the patient's lips cheeks or your fingers Factors enhancing the stability are instrument grasp and finger rest. Regarding talking about the instrument grasp, it's essential for precise control of movement made during periodontal instrumentation. Types of grasping. First of all, a standard pen grasp. The side of the middle finger rests on the shank. The most important one, the most popular one that we are using in the clinic is the modified pen grasp. It's the most effective and stable grasp. The pad of the middle finger rests on the shank, the pad of the middle finger, and produces tripod effect, which, in which enhances the control of the instrument and enhances tactile sensitivity. Palm and thumb grasp used for stabilizing instruments during sharpening and manipulating air and water syringe but not recommended for periodontal instrumentation. Finger rests. The finger rest Stabilize the hand and the instrument by providing a firm fulcrum. It prevents injury and laceration of the gingiva and the surrounding tissues. Mostly, the fourth ring finger is preferred for finger rest. This one. The fourth ring finger and that one. Okay. 
this intraoral fulcrum point for example you put your finger on a tooth then you use your instrument this conventional and this cross arch you just put your finger rest on the opposite arch and you work on the other arch this cross arch and this is the opposite arch you work on the upper and you just put your fourth ring finger on the lower arch or finger on finger sometimes you have a tight firm calculus and you need a really uh, most more power than the other calculus to be removed so you put one finger on the another to just stabilize the action of the stroke of the instrument during working extra oral fulcrum or finger rest maybe palm up fulcrum here the palm the, the your palm is up and it's obvious the palm of your hands obvious is toward you and you just put your fingers on the face of the patient here's the palm down for example here here it is index finger reinforced rest these in my opinion these are used in very tough calculus to control to, to precisely control the force of the stroke of the instrument to, pro, to prevent the trauma and this is thumb reinforced rest here you use the thumb here you, you use the index finger for instrument activation proper instrument act activation is important for the efficient plug and calculus removal the components are blade adaptation and instrument angulation and blade insertion lateral pressure and working blade adaptation it's the manner in which the working end of the periodontal instrument is placed against the tooth surface like in the A help to prevent tooth gogging and tissue mutilation, mutilation or patient discomfort because the non-cutting edge is faced toward the soft tissue and the cutting edge is on the, so on the hard tissue on the tooth surface for bladed instrument the lower third of the working end must be in contact with the tooth The blade angulation it's the angle or plane formed by the surface like here for example according to the calculus according to the cases correct angulation is essential for effectively removing the calculus and for the insertion of the instrument For calculus removal, it needs 45 to 9 degrees, and for gingival curettage or subgingival calculus removal, is less, more than 9 degrees, like in the case of D, here. Lateral pressure. It is the pressure created when force applied against the surface of the tooth with the cutting edge of the bladed instrument and it depends on the nature of the calculus and the purpose for initial scaling to remove calculus or for root planning to smooth the root surface and can be firm like in case of scaling moderate or light in case of root planing because you just have a cementum and this is a very thin layer you can't put a too much force in during and the stroke we have three basic types exploratory stroke it's slight feeling stroke used with the probes and explorers and used to evaluate the dimensions of the pocket or to detect calculus and irregularities of the tooth surface we have scaling stroke short powerful pull stroke used with the bladed instrument it 
means with the cutting instrument and used for removal of the supragingival and and subgingival calculus root planning stroke moderate to light pull stroke used for final smoothing and planning and root planning of the root surface and these are basic directions this is coronally and this is horizontally this is vertical horizontal and this is oblique one at the end of this lecture I want to thank all of you for listening listening and have a nice day your faithful teacher Harim Jafar thank you and thanks for your listening